Please be seated. Will you pray with me? Dear God, these past seven months have been tough for us. We miss gathering the way we remember, and we're all grieving a lot of loss. The church roof is leaking again, and a sudden August windstorm blew out one of our clerestory windows. In COVID times, God, we had to close our school. Now it's time to start our pledge campaign, Lord, and we want to do this right. But we're confused and there are so many needs. And in truth, most of us really are not numbers people. Please sit with us, Lord, as we gather together in your name to plan for the support of our community. Help us to discover your grand abundance as we gather the talents and treasure of this body of Christ in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. So our epistle today, read by Nick Brown, is one of the most amazing, some people's very favorite thing in scripture. The, the fancy Greek name for it is kenosis, the self-emptying of Christ, the giving of everything. And you know, a lot of us may remember it from our very earliest teachings from our parents, thinking of others first, don't think too much of yourself, look to, the, look to others, lift them up. And that's kind, of, that's kind of how we think of it today. But do we always think, when we think of this, this uh, passage, do we think of this kenosis package, passage from the platform where Paul is? This is in the second chapter of Philippians. Paul is writing to us, as he tells us in the first chapter, in chains, in prison. He's in prison, probably in Rome, maybe possibly in Ephesus, which is in, as you know, Asia Minor, modern Turkey. So Paul is writing to us and writing to the community of believers in Philippi and then also to us as we look in and listen in. He's writing to the community of believers in Philippi in Greece, and he's writing from prison because his work teaching and preaching the way of Jesus, the way of love, has put him there. And even though he's in prison, Paul somehow shifts his perspective. Paul shifts his perspective, telling the Philippians just the chapter before this, that today's re in today's reading, that, that being in prison is his greatest asset. Being in prison, Paul writes, in Philippians 1, 12 through 13, has actually served to spread the gospel because it has given him the opportunity to witness to the Roman imperial guards, to preach and teach them about Jesus and the way of love. Paul is probably making this point to counter any concern that the Philippians might have that God has abandoned him in prison. And that's not evidence of that, he's saying. But Paul's alternative interpretation of his imprisonment is also a creative and hopeful posture of abundance and gratitude. Paul continues in today's reading to urge the Philippian Christians to think expansively, planning not from a perspective of scarcity and limitation, each one for himself or herself, Paul urges the believers in Philippi to make his joy complete through their unity and accord, thinking of each other and the whole community first, rather than thinking from the limits of each one's own circumstances and individual resources. In other words, Paul encourages them to think about what they have as a whole community not what each one has in his or her own pockets. Don't rely on yourself and what you can do alone, Paul writes. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, regard utter. We'll pray.
in humility. Regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, Paul writes, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Tomorrow, Monday, Emmanuel Church begins its pledge campaign. The pledge letters will be mailed out tomorrow to all of you, along with some other materials, some of which you'll expect and you know are coming. Others are new this year, I think. First, there will be the pledge letter, signed by your senior warden, Deb Venancio, and me. And second, there'll be some answers to frequently asked questions. Remember, every question you have is a good one, even if it's not frequently asked. So please, please, we love the chance to talk to you about your pledges. Please call up. And for any of those who, who are joining us from home and you're not receiving our letters and you're not on our email list, please connect with us this week. We'd love for you to be a part of our community. Please do join in with us and please do contribute as you can and bring your spiritual gifts and other gifts to this community. Every question we can answer is a good question and strengthens us as God's community. Third, there will be your pledge card. You know to expect that, right? Here's the new thing. In your spiritual gifts, in your package will be a spiritual gifts inventory. And maybe you haven't seen one of those before. Maybe you've done that. But in any case, please complete the inventory. And please tally up your scores after you complete the inventory and record them on the reverse of your pledge card. Because when we come together on Celebration Sunday on October 25th, we, where we've had quarantine and business closure and even job loss, there's great need all around us. So when we begin to budget and plan as a community, gathering up our resources to support our life and community for the coming year, that's worship, outreach, parish, life, music, building operations, clergy and staff salaries. Sometimes we think first of what we don't have. For example, right now in COVID times, we have had to close EDS because we did not have enough students to operate the school and pay the teachers. The South Baptist Street apartment was empty and unrented for five more months than we had planned. A number of our planned weddings were canceled because of COVID and we didn't book the number of weddings that we might have booked because we're still not worshiping indoors. So our summer and fall season doesn't look like it has in the past. All those can combine to make us feel like we don't have enough because we're focusing on what we don't have, money from weddings, rentals, EDS tuition, to pay the costs of our shared ministry here at Emmanuel. When we think and plan from a perspective of scarcity, looking at what we don't have, we're not standing in a place of hope and creativity. What happens when we turn that image around like Paul did? Like when he showed the Philippians and all of us today listening in that being in prison was the best platform ever for teaching and preaching the gospel instead of thinking of it just as being chained up in a first century stone basement. What happens when we begin to plan with what we do have from God's great abundance? So what are our assets here at Emmanuel? This is free for all, you can just shout it out. What are our assets here at Emmanuel? Everybody here, awesome. And a lot of people might have said right away, our endowment, which is like our savings account that generous donors in the past have given us. And that's true too, but we can't look first to that. Everybody here is our asset. 
our great faith. Our faith is our asset. Our connections in the community and the goodwill that Emmanuel has through those connections, that's our asset. Our building, our gorgeous building and grounds that allows us to gather together, even in COVID times, with parking? Really? I mean, this is our asset. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's very kind. But yes, we have assets. And if we look at things a different way, if Paul can see being chained up in prison as the best platform ever to preach and teach the gospel, look at what we have. And another thing is, not only all of us as our asset, but the spiritual gifts we have. We are a unique and varied community, and everybody has something unique and varied to bring. And when we think of our assets that way, I made an improvement in my mask, but it's still not completely the right model. When we think of our assets that way, I don't know about you, but I start to feel rich. I start to feel rich because we are. We are rich. And when we plan from a place of abundance and celebrate our gifts before God, we start with a sense of gratitude and fullness. And when we gather our gifts before God and celebrate them and give thanks for them, there's always enough. How does this look today? when we celebrate our gifts in the 2021 pledge campaign. Be like Jesus, Paul tells us from prison. He's reimagined prison as the greatest platform ever for preaching and teaching the way of Christ. Be like Jesus, Paul tells us. <clears throat> Do all you can for others. Every last thing. Gather your gifts, both spiritual and financial before God and rejoice and give thanks for God's bounty. Be like Jesus and imagine like Paul. If prison can be for Paul the greatest platform ever for preaching and teaching the way of Christ, what is this beautiful building here, Emmanuel Church? Is it the hungry, expensive consumer of our assets? Or is this beautiful indoor space acoustically perfect for music and performance, expansive, useful, versatile in all seasons, the greatest asset we have and the best platform ever for living and sharing the gospel? Is it is it the greatest asset we have not only for sharing our Christian mission and generation of income to support the space itself, but is it for sharing our space with others to serve the wider community from all places, at all times, and in all seasons? Over these next two weeks, not just two, many weeks. Your executive committee and your vestry will be working to find nonprofit partners to join with us in our space. Especially those nonprofit partners who use space for musical and cultural performances and teaching. In these COVID times, People are hungry for meaning and transcendence, especially now. And we have an opportunity to lift up the spirits and hearts across the wider community from wherever people stand. And while we grieve, we grieve for EDS. God gives us space in that grief and that sadness and loss to use the church in new ways that we could not 
when the school was in the building because of the regulatory and safety limitations with educating little children. And so as we begin our stewardship campaign, thinking in a new way and gathering our abundant gifts before God, we rejoice. Amen.